Right, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Happy New Year. Welcome to 2017. Uh, Fight Guy fans, thank you guys for tuning in once again for another show. Returning crew up in 2017 is myself, Banana Pimentel, uh, BehindTheGloves.com. Giggling to the left of me. It's the first new at KOR Sports uh, on YouTube. And uh, Frederick Hoffman, the Barber Chef Conversation. And Dominic Medina, GreenTV.com. Now, obviously, we are here at the Roosevelt for the Gail Cotto uh, James Kirkland press conference. It just ended right now. Good 50 minutes worth of questions from the media. It was, it was a lot. Uh, what did we learn about this fight beyond the fact that it's going to be 49.95 for the pay-per-view audience? What did we learn from this fight? What did you guys take from it? Um, I don't that that uh, Rock Nation is upset Get about the pay-per-view numbers last time. I learned that. <laughs> I figured they probably were, but uh, Fred asked a great question about what us as media members can do to, uh, to better pay-per-view numbers uh, and things like that. And, uh, and Michael uh, was excited about the question and just kind of kind of put it on us that we should be uh, kind of pushing fights for their uh, entertainment value, which, which is a good point. I mean, on paper, this fight, for as long as it lasts, will be entertaining for sure. They're going to be you know, rocks at each other, and, uh, and it'll be fun to watch one, uh, as long as that happens. But, uh, but yeah, that's that's what I learned the most from this. Uh, what I learned is that Jerry Jones realized that there's a huge Mexican market of boxing fans, and he's gonna capitalize on it, and he's doing a genius thing. He's, if Miguel Cotto fights again, he has Miguel Cotto down there. If uh, uh, Canelo will fight again, he has Canelo down there. It's a uh, from a business perspective. I think this is genius. Uh, what can what James Kirkland has left? I honestly don't know. He sounded a bit punchy. Uh, you know, I, I, I hate to bring that up, but uh, he he's definitely on the other side of the mountain in terms of taking punches to the head. And uh, Miguel Cotto is Miguel Cotto. You got to dig and pry and see how much you can get out of him. You know, that's just who he is. And uh, it's going to be a very entertaining fight. Uh, I don't know. Who the, who the favorite is in terms of fans because I can't see Canelo fans who's Cotto. And, you know, so it's, it'll definitely be a good fight. I, I, I believe Cotto will win, you know, too much to the body. Kirkland looked about 35 pounds overweight, you know, big, really big, you know. And uh, he has five weeks, so, I mean, between laxatives and running, I, I think it's gonna be very challenging for him to make 153. Dominic? Uh, you know, as Steven alluded earlier, uh, Rock Nation is stressing to the public that they, we need to buy this fight card. I think they understand that it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a very difficult fight to sell. Um, on paper, it's a good fight, though. It really is. You, you can't go wrong with uh, someone like James Kirkland, who has some serious power. Um, and Miguel Cotto, he's a smaller guy, so it's going to be an interesting fight, but um, it's going to be a really hard sell, though. And like I said before, Rock Nation is really trying to push it. Uh, I don't know how, how many how many numbers it's going to do. You guys have any idea? Like, where well, let me let be? me ask you this: Is the price point a good value for the fan? Obviously, we already know we're going to get rigged down as the coming event. That's the rumored part. Oh, yeah, Franco. Right? Yeah, exactly. We're going to get the opponent. Uh, bitch, uh, what's his name? Yeah, Franco. It, no, no, it's somebody from uh, Al Heyman's camp. Uh, that somebody on our stream, on the Fight Guy stream, thank you, he said the name. <laughs> I forget, I can't remember it, but it's a good undefeated fighter okay. for Rigondeaux. It's not like, give me fight or anything. Right, right, right. So we're going to get that, and then we're going to get two other fights on the card. Rock I Nation. Mean, I, mean, I mean, I, I you know, as a boxing fan, I love Rigondeaux, but when you put him on a pay-per-view, in terms of trying to sell the pay-per-view, I think that's probably the wrong choice, because he has the the um, reputation as being a boring fighter to, to most yeah, casual yeah, boxing fans. I mean, like, again, like I love Rigondeaux. I love the way he fights, but and, and I'm, I'm I'm excited now. That I didn't know that he was on the card, so I'm a little more excited about this card because he's on it. But to kind of use that as your selling point of like, hey, you got to be realistic to, for your fight fans. It's not going to sell. At, at me being a, a real fight fan and a boxing junkie, I appreciate someone like Guillermo Rigondeaux. But let's be serious. Are you going to pay for it? Being the co future? So I just don't think it's gonna sell. But you know, I, I think this is also partially like uh, Pacquiao's last paper view was not on HBO, was not promoted by right. HBO, was all top rank, and he did 300,000 bucks. So it speaks to the power, the, the drawing power of Pacquiao. Well, I think this is kind of a test in, in Cotto's uh, case. It's like, all right, well, he's he was always kind of known as the third best pay per view selling right. fighter there was behind Cotto, or I mean, behind uh, Mayweather, behind Pacquiao. So, 
you know, now I think it's like, okay, now you're you know, kind of in the twilight of your career, you're already talking about retirement, you're fighting an uh, entertainment exciting fighter, so well, I guess we'll see I mean, what it does. We all understand why this fight is on pay-per-view, right? Yeah. I mean, we'll tell yeah. Miguel Cotto simply cannot get paid what he's guaranteed if it's going to be a fight on HBO, regular HBO. And HBO doesn't really have the, uh, the money to back it up, unfortunately. So, again, it's, it's an interesting fight. I like the fight. If you really love boxing, I mean, support the sport, man. Yeah. Oh, I, I was just going to say, the fight was set up so Cotto, I, mean, I, hate, I hate to be very frank, man. The, the fight is set up so Cotto can get a hell of a knockout in the seventh round. Go to the body the first six rounds, Kirkland drops his hands, he knocks him out with a headshot. That's a, supposed to happen in this right. fight, right? Now, with Ann Wolf, I'm telling you, if they promote Ann Wolf and James Kirkland and they doing a... Uh, what do you call them Japanese planes? That kamikaze. Kamikaze. That com those kamikaze uh, missions that they go on in terms of training. We won't. Uh, you can get some more buys out of it. I think yeah. the humanistic point of this to sell the fight is, is the humans that are involved, the human interest, I would say. She should have been here. She should have been here. Yeah, she should have been here. I think the media would have had a lot. We would have loved I've we, never we, interviewed her. Yeah, we never have either. You know, yeah, neither have I. And, and wait, so, who's the owner of Rock Nation again? Jay-Z. Yeah. 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 Why is he over here? <laughs> he should tweet out something I, I don't, to promote it. I don't understand. <laughs> and he lives here. Andre, he lives and he lives. I don't get it. I simply don't get why you would own or create your own boxing promotion company if you can't even support it. You show your face. Yeah. I, I mean, dude, <laughs> you know no, how, how many more pay-per-view buys you'll get yeah. just for showing up? Or just tweeting it out. I don't get it. Really? Just tweet it out. Like, order it on pay-per-view. Have your social media team do it. You don't even have to do it. Just exactly. Make it come from your account. Have a <laughs> cutout of yourself. <laughs> Had Anne Wolf been here, I mean, like, she, like from, from interviews I've seen, like she pops off. You know what I mean? She'll like she'll 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 get angry. She'll she'll get intense. Um, she's very protective of James, even when she, when James wasn't fighting with her. Um, like I wanted to see that. I wanted to hear that. I think I, I mean I, you know, and I didn't ask James anything today. I know Fred did ask him a couple questions, but James wasn't getting a lot of uh, a lot of questions today. But had Ann Wolf, Ann Wolf got a, got a lot of questions directed towards her. Now before I go off on that, the, the opponent for Guillermo uh, Rigondeaux is Moises Flores. Flores. Yeah, it's Flores. So it's a really good that's fight. A good, that's a good match. Twenty-five and old, seventeen knockouts. Yeah. But going off of what you just said right now. You know, in boxing, we have these discussions, the A side and B side, you know, and we've been to many press conferences. We've been to uh, Porter versus Broner. You know, Broner popped off, but Porter always said his things and everything like that. Do you really think Kirkland just took over this whole B side role and just decided to stay quiet and submissive throughout this entire time? Like, literally, it was everything was directed to Cotto. James could have said something like, yo, I'm here too, you know, but he just let it slide, let it go. Like, is he really just falling into that B side role? I, I've never seen him act differently than that. Uh, other than, I guess, weigh-ins. But I, I think he gets in people's faces and weigh-ins and stuff. But I, I've never... I, the only time I saw James kind of get a little heated was when... Um, I guess, apparently HBO was asking him a lot about Ann Wolf uh, leading up to the, the Canelo fight. And he was like, yeah, I'm getting kind of pissed off. You keep asking me about that. <laughs> but that was it. He said it like that. Like, uh -huh. So, uh, you know, I, I think that's just James. That's just James is James. And that's who he is. I think kind of like uh, Danny and... Um, and Angel, I think Danny kind of takes a backseat to, to what Angel does and lets Angel kind of do his thing. And I think James is, <laughs> would have liked to have been able to do that today with uh, had I worked with Well, at the end of the day, he's a B-level fighter. I mean, so, I mean, he, he has no choice but to take the backseat. You know, <laughs> Ouch. Does he, Ouch. No, I'm, no I'm, I'm being honest. No. I, does he have devastating knockout power? Yes. Does he have low average defense? Yes. Does he... Uh, does he depend on his, his punching power as opposed to his boxing skills? Yes. And uh, so you would say he's the perfect opponent. For he's the perfect opponent for every. For, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not saying he can't win. Right. Yeah, but yeah, I'm yeah. saying he's the but perfect, he perfect opponent see, for every up and coming point. strong punching fighter that's trying to get to the next phase. Can he knock him out with one punch? Absolutely. But he's the perfect candidate for the Canelo. For the Cotos, Jamal Charlos, you know what I mean? So are you expecting another knockout early, mid-rounds? 
if I'm betting on this fight, I'm not betting on this fight, but if I'm betting on this fight, I'm betting Cotto by knockout, you know? And uh, that's just the reality of it. Do I want Kirkland to hit Cotto and make Cotto believe he's in the fight? Yes, because I'm paying $49.95. You know? <laughs> so so I, I would love for it to go to, because Rigondeaux is going to win by, Rigondeaux is either going to break the dude's jaw or win by 12 rounds or nothing. And that's just the reality of it. And so I want, I want something out of this fight. I'm going to pay the $49.95, you know? You know, so. So, or if anything, we're all just gonna go to one of ours and just yeah. have a nice little fight. Yeah, we could. fight night there. We could. Yeah. We could. Yeah. I'll call you up for that night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can do it at my place. That's why I'm down, down, down there. Anything else you guys got to say about this fight? Obviously, a lot of people are down on it. The fact that it is PPV, but we understand why it is PPV, and the price point isn't bad. And so, uh, well, my last point about it is, I mean, Koto is a legend. Yeah. So. Your, my favorite it's fighter. your last yeah. time it? watching a legend. Yeah, he's, he's one of my favorite fighters for sure. So it's your last time watching a legend. And he's giving you, you know, kind of what you want. He's giving you an action-packed fight. You know it's going to be an action-packed fight. So, you know, that, that's why you should buy it. Is you're going to watch a legend for one of the last times you're going to be able to see him. At least no more than three more times you're going to see Koto. Right. Be honest. So you're going to get to watch a legend one more time. You know, with the best in his corner, and you're gonna, he's gonna give me an opinion. You know, my my question, my question is, uh, this victory, where's it gonna lead to? Obviously, it's Mayweather. They both want Mayweather. They I want, mean, they want Mayweather. They want Canelo. They've yes. literally outlined it. Let's, Mayweather let's or Canelo. Let's talk about the real possibilities. Will Mayweather come out of retirement for Miguel Cotto? It did so well last time, 1.5 million and everything. Right, it, did, it did really good. It did really good. So and, and, and it was a great fight. And it was a great fight. And see, the only downfall I see about that is this: that in that first fight, Miguel Cotto had that 154 belt and everything. Right now, he's doing this catch weight at 153, mm -hmm. meaning mm -hmm. that Floyd might want to drop him down a little lower. And we heard what Freddie said. He likes catch weights. Miguel himself said he's been on both sides, and he's not coming back down to 147. I thought, uh, Freddie said he didn't like catch weights. He didn't, but he, he doesn't. Didn't, but he, he did, but he understands it's a Texas fighter. Okay. So that's okay. why it's like, you know, him dropping down to this fight to 153 means Floyd will try to drop him down to 150. You know? Right. So it's like, it, you, it's, it's give and take with it, but honestly, realistically, this is a road to Canelo. <laughs> Canelo wants to fight three times this year. We're hearing Chavez, we're hearing Triple G in September. This opens up December for Miguel Cotto versus Canelo, the second fight, the rematch. Which the first fight was entertaining. It was really good. I could see it as a draw, honestly. I thought it was close. I thought I, I actually had it. I had Cotto win in seven rounds of five. Same here. Same here. And then I rewatched the fight and I flipped it. I flipped it mm -hmm. Canelo seven rounds. And that's exactly how fights are. Some uh -huh. fights like that, uh, Ward Kovalev, you could flip some rounds Next here and there. Depending. I've never yeah. flipped that fight, but you, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Kovalev lost that fight the moment it was signed. Was written in before the fight started. I just admitted it. I just admitted it. <laughs> Now, obviously, we're good. you guys are going to get more from us of the fight, guys. We have a very busy fight schedule. month schedule coming up. Like, on Tuesday, we have a media workout with uh, Leo Santa Cruz, Mikey Garcia, and Dijon. Then we have the Danny Jacobs versus Triple G press conference on Wednesday. And it's going to be a fight. gives me chills, man. <laughs> Uh, not that I've heard, but I only know Tuesday and Wednesday. But if you find out yeah, something about Monday, let me know, please. Yeah. But okay. we're gonna come and we're gonna give you guys a lot more in 2017 than we did in 2016. We got a late start there, but trust us, this year's gonna be big, and we have a big, we have a big giveaway coming up. So stay tuned for that. We'll let you know about that very shortly, and just stay tuned. Any closing words? Yeah, and I'll just say, y'all do just put ten dollars in the pot, buy the fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone bring the chips. I don't, pizza. The, I don't know what the Puerto Rican beer is, but get the Coronas, <laughs> get the Tecate, soul, like, whatever yeah. the soul, whatever it is. <laughs> hang out. Get some rum. Yeah, yeah. Hang out. Everybody True. put in $10 and hang True. out for sure. exactly. it. You know, and that's you want like the sport to survive. Days after yeah. Valentine's Day, so you know you're going to need some time with, with yeah. your fellas you need at that time. Yeah. You got to recoup. I get your testosterone. Like you <laughs> said, this is going to be the final year that you get to see a legend. I mean, Coach, Both. So. Pack y'all in. Uh, yeah. For that matter. Yeah. Yeah. True. So guys, uh, in closing, Fernando Pimentel for BehindTheGloves.com. Dominic Redeem, RingTV.com. Uh, Steven Cordenio, KO Artist Sports on YouTube. And uh, Frederick Hawthorne with Barbershop Conversation. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. More importantly, subscribe, subscribe to, to mine. <laughs> <laughs> Here, just one final breakdown. Subscribe to RingTV and IFL. Subscribe to KO Artist Sports. Subscribe to Barbershop Conversations. 
and subscribe again to the fight guys. You can also subscribe to Dominic Verdeen. Yeah, subscribe I, to I his. I got a lot of shit going on. Follow, <laughs> follow us on all our social medias. Facebook is the fight guys. Instagram and Twitter is the fight guys underscore. And uh, thank you guys again. Big 2017 coming up. I'm gonna let you guys know. We'll see you at the fights. Thank you. Thanks. Why you gotta pop me for? <laughs> uh,